Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to continue on dealing with file streams. Instead of just writing to new files, we're going to talk now about reading from files. So what we're going to do as a demonstration is create um, read in five scores that are stored in a text file and then calculate the average of those numbers. And so uh, what I've got is a text file called scores.txt and five integers in there. And um, so we've already included fstream. Remember that's step one. Always include fstream if you're dealing with files. And I'm including iostream as well because we're going to output the results to the screen. So we're going to be able to see what we've created. Let's create some variables to hold the scores as well as our new file stream. Now, just like before, this is going to have the same five steps, but instead of an OF stream for output, we're going to get input. So we have an IF stream, input file stream, and we can call this whatever we want. In this case, I'm going to call it file in, declaring input stream variable. Secondly, we can open that file stream. So I can do file in dot open just like before. Now this time we'll want to specify the name of an existing file. Um, so in this case, scores.txt will be the name of it. And it also needs to be a file that's in the same folder or directory of the program in this case. And I'll show you how to kind of change that a little bit uh, shortly. But for now, remember, just put all your files that you're reading in the same location as this program that you're uh, creating and going to run. After that, we've opened it. So that's step three. Step four is to do all the input or output. Now, just like CN, where you can read something in into a variable, we can use now our file in or whatever you named yours in to go into it. So let's create some variables to read in these scores. And I'm going to go ahead and create a variable for holding the average. So here I've created five integers, uh, one through five score, and then a double to hold the average. And what we can do now is uh, input score one. That'll read in the first value from our file as an integer. And I could just go ahead and do this all on one line for all of the five scores. All right, if I didn't have any typos there, that should read them in. You could have split this up into multiple lines, but why not just do it all on one? Note that I declared my variables all at the top, so I waited to open my file stream until after I've declared all my variables. That's good practice. Then after that, we can go ahead and close our file stream. That's, remember, that's the last step. So file in dot close. And remember, we don't need to put anything inside these parentheses. It knows what file is open. So just like file out, same steps in all that regard. Next, what we can do is let's just go ahead and output all of the scores that we read in just to make sure it works. So here's some code to do that score one through five um, output. Then we can calculate the average and set that. So I'll just go ahead and add to it as well. The average number is average. Now we haven't actually calculated the average, but we will. Um, let's go ahead and set it equal to zero. We won't, we, I just want to compile and see that it works and it'll give us a warning if we didn't use or initialize average before we output it. Um, so just to avoid that warning, I'm setting it there. All right, here's the command line. Go ahead and compile it and we could go ahead and read it. Here are the numbers we read in, all comma separated. And uh, the average is zero because we didn't actually set the average yet. I uh, haven't done that part of the code. Let's make sure this is uh, correct. So 234, 55, 0, 33, and 9. If I flip back to the file, 234, 55, 0, 33, and 9. So yes, we were able to easily read in five values from a text file that were all integers. Now you could read in doubles or strings or whatever you want as well. This is just an example with doubles. All right, let's go ahead and calculate this average. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all these scores together. I'll go ahead and just say um, initially the average equals score one through five. Then what we want to do is divide by five. So I could do this on a separate line. Um, what I'll do is I'll say average equals average divided by five. Note we've got average here on the left and right of the equal sign. So a shorter hand way of writing this would be to use the divide equal operator. That's much more succinct, looks nice. Uh, definitely the better way to go. All right, let's flip back, compile it and run it. And we got 66.2. If I had done this all on one line, so I could do it like this, right? Divide by five. And then, you know, this might be the way you naturally do it, right? Um, so let's compile 
and run it and you see yep we lost the 0.2 there in our average um, for the output uh, so a solution to that if you wanted to write it on the same line is to just do 50 5.0 um, and that would give you the floating point part back again and have it all calculating the average on one line of code which is kind of nice um, so anyways that's a program that takes some input using a new IF stream that we created and reads it from a file that we already have existing. Uh, so here's the reading and then does some calculations and outputs it. Note that I closed the file. So this is step five, closing the file right after we're done with the input. That's good practice. So even though we had more stuff to do, I didn't wait to close the file. I closed it right away. Um, so that's a good idea. Once you're done with file in, just go ahead and close it. Don't wait to do that. Um, all right, so a few errors that are very common. Uh, one is, again, just to forget to open the file stream. So if you do that, it'll still compile and run. You'll just get uh, not the correct results. So you can see I just got random output here, not anything uh, correct or even close to correct. Um, and that's because we didn't actually set those values reading in here because we didn't have anything to read in. Um, so it compiled uh, and it ran without any errors, but we uh, got some bad output. So it's a semantic error, not a syntax error. Another problem is, you know, if you misspell the file name. So I don't have a score.txt, but that would be an easy mistake to make. I've got scores.txt. So now if I compile it and run it, You'll see I still get bad input um, and so the output is incorrect. Watch out if uh, you're getting bad output, uh, it may be that you're not getting the input correctly because your file that you said you wanted doesn't exist. And again, it doesn't tell you anything about that not happening. It just uh, doesn't give you the results you wanted. Another possibility is you're trying to read a file that isn't in the location you are currently in. Now you can specify paths here where you want to write to uh, or read from on Windows like I am. Um, I can say I want to be in the C drive um, and then scores. So I would read scores from the C drive instead of my current folder. Uh, this is generally a bad idea because um, if you move it to a different computer it may not have the files in the same locations and so it's better to use relative paths like we have here, this is saying, look at it for the same place where we're running the program. Now you can specify relative paths using uh, just not starting with a slash or a drive letter um, in Windows or Mac OS or Linux. Um, so for example, I could say, um, I wanna be in the um, input folder and then look at the scores. So what that would look for is being in where I'm currently at, there should be a subfolder called input and then inside there, the scores file. Um, or I could say, I wanna be up a directory, up a folder. You could do that by dot dot. Note that I'm using the forward slash here. Oftentimes in Windows at least, we'll use the backslash, you know, so you might see your command line look like this slash um, something, maybe home and then another slash and then wherever you want to put it. This slash will actually be an escape character and so it'll actually look for some weird slash H here. So that won't actually work with this absolute path. In order to use that uh, backslashes, you have to put two backslashes per slash. So this says I want just the backslash, uh, one backslash rather than some special escape character. R look up escape characters if you don't remember that part of the material. Um, but easy enough to just use forward slashes and you don't have to worry about that problem. And also even better, uh, just uh, use relative paths rather than absolute paths. Um, so bear that in mind, uh, lots of places where you can go wrong uh, if you don't have access to the file that you think you do. Again, make sure that you have your operators in the right direction. So here we're doing extraction because we're pulling stuff out of the file stream and it's going into these score variables. Um, so that it goes this way instead of this way. You'll get a long error message compiler error if you do that wrong. One more thing that I just want to quickly point out is that the nice thing about having to declare your input and output file streams is you can have many of them. So if I wanted to have one program read from multiple files, you know, I could easily just declare another file stream, user in for um, some user file or um, settings, maybe some settings input stream. Um, and we can also easily read and write from files in the same program, just have one IF stream for input and one OF stream for output. So file out, we could easily do that and use both the input stuff that we learned in this video and the output stuff we learned from the last video. So pretty easy to do. Um, you've got a lot of flexibility here uh, with the input and output.
Um, so I hope this video was helpful. Pretty short on the uh, output end and, or input end. And the reason for that is it's pretty much the same as uh, outputting to files. Just uh, instead of an output stream, we have an input stream. Let me know, as always, if you have any questions.